Thing. Order! Order! And you are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Save yourself, man! Now, if the Labour Party was looking for a good moment to announce the resignation of one of its major players, then perhaps the headline-hogging departure of Mr Cairns provided that opportunity. Mr Corbyn and his deputy, Tom Watson, have not, of late, been what you might call close. This evening, Mr Watson, champion of the moderates in the party, said he was standing down as deputy leader and MP. He acknowledged there had been political differences, that's putting it mildly, and that he had been a very difficult decision. He's the deputy leader who clashed repeatedly with his boss, and now on day one of the election campaign, Tom Watson has decided he'll stay and fight no more. So this really is a personal decision, uh, and there's never a right time to go in politics, but you can leave it longer than you should, and I think it's better that I go out uh, like this with everyone happy and everyone campaigning for the Labour team. Even at the last Labour conference, divisions between Jeremy Corbyn and Tom Watson had been centre stage. He said it was not a political decision, but for many in the moderate wing of the Labour Party, he was the reason that they were staying put. He spoke for the party members on anti-Semitism, on Brexit, pushing the party towards support for another referendum. In his letter of response to his resignation, Jeremy Corbyn wrote... Few people have given as much to the Labour movement as you have, and I know that many thousands of members and trade unionists that you've inspired and worked with over the years will be very sorry to see you go. Of his own regret, no mention. It has rocked what had been looking like an almost too good to be true start to Labour's election campaign. This morning in Telford, Jeremy Corbyn's pitch had been that he would be the kind of leader who promoted others, not lost them. But leaders must also trust others to play their part. A good leader holds open the door that others may walk through in the future. You say that leaders must allow others to play the part, but isn't the truth that your personal poll ratings are so bad that you are part of the problem for your party? Romney, um, thanks very much for your point. I lead the party and I'm proud to do so. I've been elected twice to lead this party and I spend my whole time travelling around the country campaigning for this party and that's what I'll be doing in this general election. At Jeremy Corbyn's final event this evening in Macclesfield, he was interrupted by a heckler accusing him of supporting terrorism. Mr Corbyn appeared unruffled by that. Tom Watson's resignation might cause deeper ripples. Romilly Weeks, News at 10, Macclesfield. Historians will mull over the timing of this resignation and wonder. Was it designed to hit the Conservatives hard on the night of their election launch or his own party, just when things appeared to be going smoothly? In the last two hours, Tom Watson's Labour's deputy leader has stepped down from his position and quit frontline politics altogether, citing personal reasons and committing himself to campaign on health. All that may be true, yet the man who has been a thorn in his own leader's side for so long is unlikely to go without consequence. He's rowed publicly with the Corbynistas, fought to keep his place at the centre of the leadership lineup, and been the leading voice of Labour's moderates. What happens to the direction of his party now, and will others follow him out? Elizabeth Glinker is here and has been looking into what we know so far. What's he been saying this evening? Yes, Emily, well, Tom Watson chose to break this news on Twitter a couple of hours ago by publishing the letter he had written to Jeremy Corbyn. Um, we can have a look at some of that now. Uh, in that letter, he says he's taken a very difficult decision to stand down as a Member of Parliament and Labour deputy leader at the forthcoming election. He says that serving the Labour Party has been the privilege of his lifetime. He joined in 1982 and never imagined that a kid from Kidderminster would end up as a deputy party leader. Of course, Tom Watson has been at odds with the party leadership for some time now. Uh, just at conference earlier this year, you'll remember that he that you know, attempts were made to get rid of him by abolishing the role of deputy leader. Big uproar in the parliamentary party and Jeremy Corbyn stepped Stephanie. in and put a, a stop to that. Um, but his position is difficult and you might say that there's a certain inevitability to this announcement today. What looks less inevitable though is that you get it right at the very beginning of this election campaign. And 
depending on which way you look at it, uh, you might find that more surprising. Is this a parting shot mm. uh, to cause maximum damage? Well, that's something the man himself denies. I don't want anyone to think that it's that. I want every Labour member and every Labour supporter campaigning for the Labour team to make sure that we can get a Labour government elected on December the 12th. This is a very personal decision for me. I've got lots of other things I want to do in life. I'm training to be a level two gym instructor. I've got a book on weight loss coming out in January. Uh, I hope to set up an organisation to mobilise the people power of people with type 2 diabetes like myself to try and get improved support for them. So this really is a personal decision uh, and there's never a right time to go in politics but you can leave it longer than you should. Yeah, nobody saw that one coming. Um, talk us through the reaction so far that we've had to this as well. OK, well, we heard in the clip there Tom Watson talking about his family and some of the changes in his life. And I've been in contact with a, a few people who kind of know him well this evening. And a lot of them are saying, you know, this is a per personal decision. He split with his wife some time ago. He has a long commute to the north of England to visit his children. Many people will be aware he's lost about five stone in weight. You know, he's reversed his diabetes. Uh, and, you know, and he's releasing a book, as we, we heard in the clip there. Uh, one person texted me and said he's a different person. He wants a different life. Um, however, there is no getting away from the fact that this is significant. Um, you know, earlier this year, Tom Watson was kind of the centrist with his finger in the dike, uh, holding people who were perhaps not happy with the Corbyn lead mm. leadership, leadership in the party. I remember seeing him at the time and chatting to him about it. And he'd spent a furious week trying to hold people in the Labour Party around the the time Luciana Berger and others were planning to leave uh, and I think some of those people now might be feeling a little bit confused a little bit of kind of uh, why is this happening now um, his position though as we've said has become increasingly difficult uh, after that spat at conference the NEC actually made a rule change so in the event of Jeremy Corbyn uh, leaving his job as leader the deputy leader Tom Watson would not automatically become leader and there is that clear water between him and the people around Jeremy Corbyn so perhaps perhaps not too surprising um, the response from Jeremy Corbyn tonight I would I would describe this response as sort of unfailingly polite I don't know if there's any other way to, to put it uh, he thanks Tom Watson uh, for his work taking on vested interests and this is the part I really love goes on to mention their convivial chats on many things including cycling exercise and horticulture <laughs> Lizzie, great. We're going to get more reaction now. Gavin Shuka uh, joins us now, formerly Labour MP before joining Change UK, now standing as an independent, and Tom Baldwin, the former director of comms, Red Miliband. I'm sure the personal stuff rings true, but it is an odd time to decide to become a gym instructor. Gavin? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what does this tell you? I think it tells you what's been obvious for a long time. The moderates in the Labour Party have lost. The key difference here, of course, uh, as we were just saying, is that earlier this year, Tom Watson was the one holding moderates back in. He himself has chosen to leave the pitch now, and I think there will be many, uh, including those that were in the exit door around the time when we went to set up Change UK, who will take the view that they've been abandoned. Tell us the inside story. He was the one that helped set up Change UK or that said, you can come back when I'm in charge. I mean, what was going on there? I mean, to be, to be clear, I haven't had this direct conversation with Tom, but I've had endless conversations with Labour moderates, some which have said, Tom has set up a vehicle to keep us mm. in, others of which have said Tom has set up a vehicle to take us out. And the challenge for us, as those of us that felt that we couldn't with any integrity put Jeremy Corbyn into number 10, was to say to those good colleagues, look, we just do not believe that something is going to emerge here. Unfortunately, the fig leaf of Tom Lee, uh, Watson coming along and fixing this problem for Labour moderates is now gone, and they will now have to make their own judgments ahead of a general election in a matter of weeks. How do you feel about it? I'm hugely frustrated. I think this year, is, there was one clear moment at which the soul of the Labour Party uh, was really there and available um, and contested over. And at that key moment, Tom was not the one saying, actually, these colleagues have been bold and courageous in being honest about Jeremy Corbyn. He was the one holding them back. And I think history will judge him for that too. What would you say to the Labour moderates in the party tonight? I mean... To be frank, I think the Labour moderates that have stayed have, in a sense, done a deal with the devil. They have decided, frankly, that it's more important, and I'm a supporter of people's vote, 
uh, it's more important to have a people's vote in that manifesto than to stand up against the very many real problems with Jeremy Corbyn there. They have had that fig leaf of protection that one day Tom is going to come along and get them out of that problem. It is now gone, and in a sense, their shame is there for all to see. What, what does this do to the direction of Labour now, Tom? I think uh, Gavin does a slight disservice to his former Labour colleagues who are stay, staying in the party. You know, Tom Watson is a symbol of the depth and the breadth of Labour MPs. There are many, many dozens, hundreds even, of other Labour MPs who are staying in the Labour Party and determined, as you say, to get a people's vote, which is the way to deal with the single biggest issue of our time. And I, I don't think it's, it's fair to say that you know, this is some sour or symbol that somehow a, one faction of the Labour Party is one. I think the warmth of their letters tonight shows it's not Tom's intention to cause some schism. And I think, I think the efforts that supporters of Jeremy Corbyn are going to, to actually be uh, sort of to pay tribute to Tom, to Tom I, I think it's part of that too. And sometimes in politics, you know, like, you know, I think we forget that politicians are human. And Tom Watson, I think, is perhaps one of the most human of all politicians. And he genuinely does have human reasons for wanting to step back. I mean, it's been a really tough few years, you know this. And sometimes you look ahead of a general election and think, do I really want to go through that again? And I think that's the truth about this. And I don't think Tom's trying to lead people out of the Labour Party now. I think Labour's actually had a pretty good day. No, I, I think you know, wheels are beginning to wobble on Boris Johnson's election bus already. And I think Tom Watson's just looked at this and said, I don't want to go for another five years. But Tom, y you'll admit that there were many in your party that didn't really trust him, you know, that felt that he was the one that was trying to get Blair out to put Brown in, that he was then the one who was trying to go on manoeuvres with the leader, that he was the one that sort of got the paedophile case wrong and had spoken very publicly about that. Do you think his shine had gone? Uh, I've known Tom 30 years and most of that time I've been good friends with him. I mean, trouble follows him around. He does take very bold stances on things. Uh, I mean, yeah, he was Reckless. the first. I think he actually shows leadership. And, you know, he was the first member of Labour, Labour Shadow Cabinet to speak from a People's Vote platform. And now they're all queuing up to do it. I mean, I think, I think Tom has helped change the Labour Party. He's helped get the Labour Party to a position of supporting a People's Vote. And that, if, you know, we do get a People's Vote in this country as a result, that would be an incredible legacy that Tom has left the Labour that, Party. That is the legacy that he's left, isn't it? That you're all now, not you, but the Labour MPs are now in a place where a people's vote or a second vote or a confirmatory vote sure. is now policy. Sure, they've dragged Jeremy Corbyn kicking and screaming to that position and I don't have a problem and with you that. You didn't I, think that would happen? I, no, I, I don't believe that would have happened without Tom Watson. Fantastic. Uh, my argument is not that, actually. My argument is that people have chosen to look another way on Corbyn's very real failings in order to get what you and I would both want, but which I'm not willing to pay the price for in terms of chucking the Jews under the bus, for example. You know, these are very but you're, important you're surely not saying that every Labour MP judgment. You're not saying that every Labour MP who's seeking re-election is quote chucking the Jews under the bus. You're not saying that about your former colleagues. Surely. I'm being utterly clear that if you stand in this general election on a Labour ticket, you are campaigning to put Jeremy Corbyn as number ten, and you and I both know, Tom, that there are huge numbers of Labour MPs that are trying to find any out they can possibly can find to prevent that from happening. With Tom Watson leaving today the last and final out, which is, don't worry, Tom will get us out of this fix, is now gone. What? And there's a moment of accountability. I, I, I think there's plenty of other people in the Labour Party who, who will fight those battles. What, what happens to the deputy leadership now? I mean, where does that go? Because there is a new policy, a new regime of how to pick the leader, and we think it could be a women, a female-only shortlist now, right? Sure. I mean, I'm not qualified to make that judgment having left, but the one thing that I would say is the assessment we made before we left the Labour Party was quite clear we felt that the Labour Party had been captured at every single level, the NEC, the Parliamentary Labour Party, uh, right the way through to the membership and so on. And I don't think that's coming back in my political lifetime, which may be very short as a result of the decisions that I've made. Uh, but actually, it's not coming back, I think, in our political generation. Okay. If, if, if the Labour Party had been captured at every single level by the, in, in the way you describe, the Labour Party would not have moved to support a people's vote in all circumstances, which is something that you thought would never happen, and it has happened, thanks to work of people like Tom Watson and many others okay. who have stayed in the Labour Party. Thank you both. Thanks very much indeed. We're going to go to Nick Watt, who's in Birmingham, expecting to be talking about the uh, Tories tonight. Nick, how big a moment does this feel to you? 
Well, this is potentially a seminal moment because Tom Watson is, as you say, has been the keeper of that so-called centrist flame. So the big question tonight is, is it over for his wing of the party? Now, friends and supporters of him, his who are staying in the party, are putting on a brave face. They're saying they don't expect others to follow, not least because there was a meeting of Labour's National Executive Committee today that approved candidates for the election, so it's a bit late. The second thing they're saying is they think they're not losing the battle for control of the party. There have been a whole bunch of reselections, and they say that has not gone well necessarily for the Corbynite wing. At that meeting of the NEC attended by Tom Watson, the Labour Party said no to Chris Williamson, mm -hmm. who is a Corbynite. He's represented uh, Derby North. They said no, you can't stand again because he's facing allegations of downplaying the significance of anti-Semitism. Well, he says tonight he's standing as an independent. I was talking to fr one front brencher who said to me, look, the Corbynites have not quite got the grip on the party that they want. And another former member of the Shadow Cabinet said to me, we are staying and we are fighting. The final thing that friends of uh, Tom Watson are telling me tonight is don't overlook the significance of the personal element of this announcement. There was that significant weight loss and they say that really has changed his outlook on life. Nick, thanks very much indeed.